Almighty FC 24 is upon us, and this fight card is absolutely stacked. I'm Jendo with Combat Sports UK, and this is your Almighty FC 24 preview show. Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the body here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Almighty 24 goes down in Liverpool this weekend and will contest four championship belts, including the 61 Kilo Pro Championship, which will be your main event. I was lucky enough to speak to around 20 fighters from this card and promoter Ray Thompson himself. With as many guests as we have stopping in, we have to get going. And what better way to do so than to start with the big man himself. Ray Thompson is the man behind Almighty and I was lucky enough to speak with him extensively prior to Almighty 24. Now joining us, the big man in charge, the man who makes it all possible, Ray Thompson. Ahead of Almighty 24 this weekend, how was everyone involved with the promotion feeling? Uh, it's uh, fight week's always a strange time because you've obviously I've done so much work in the preparation. I've put together the you know the best fights that I can possibly put together for this card. I think we've got top. I think we've got twenty five fights booked. But this is the time when things get etchy because if anything happens now, it's very very hard for you to do, be able to do anything about it. So this 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 last week's always a little bit like take deep breath, see how things play out. Don't worry about it too much and just deal with things that pop up. And do what you can, but don't worry about things that are out of your control. Whatever's gonna is gonna be is gonna be. And hopefully, if we do lose something along the way in this week, which is always a possibility, there's enough depth on the card where the card can still go ahead and it will still be a good night on Saturday. Fight week has to be somewhat of a passive anxiety attack. You never know what's gonna happen last minute. But Almighty demands respect from anyone within the UK scene. How excited are you to put on Almighty 24? And were there any difficulties getting to fight day this time around? Obviously, we still got a few days out, but at least we're at fight. Uh, I, I, I always love putting on the fight shows. I think anyone who who knows me knows that the first thing the first thing you'll get from me is is that I just love mixed martial arts. So being able to to have my little input in the sport, which is is which is which is my show. And put a platform on for these, you know, young, young up and coming athletes. Um, you know, that, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I get my kicks from, and I get my kicks from watching a fight and uh, watching a, a magic moment on a fight, whether it be a, a, like a front kick we had at the last one, or we've got uh, the, the war that we had uh, in back in January between Jack and Mantis. You know, things like that are what, how I get my kick. So I, I'm always excited every time there's a card coming up, uh, and it always seems so far away, and all of a sudden it's here. Uh, with regards to dramas, we, we dramas coming up. We, you know, we we've had to change our main event twice. We had a main event announced. A guy pulled out because he had a real bad illness that he wasn't aware of, which was affecting his his uh, his cardio. And he, when they looked into it further, they really had a problem with his heart. So he was pulled out. We replaced him. And then the guy who he was due to face, he's pulled out. So that fight got scrapped. So so there's all, but that's all. That's part and parcel of the game. And the way I look at it, for 16 months, I had to sit here and twiddle my thumbs, and I couldn't do nothing because of the pandemic. So if I've got a choice of doing nothing or face the sweat of a fight week and losing the odd fight and, you know, having the drama of pullouts or the drama of whatever happens, I'd rather that than what we've just had for the last 16 months. So that, that's kind of where my mentality is at the moment. You're living many young sports fans' dreams. I've spent countless hours myself on little booking simulators online just trying to get that itch. But... What fights are you most looking forward to on this card? Give me some pro fights, some amateur fights. Man, it's loaded. You said 25 fights, and they're all evenly matched. Yeah, so one of the things that we're known for is, is the evenly matches. That's what I try and do. I try and match as fairly as I can. Uh, I try and make um, my fights 50-50 or as close to 50-50 as I can get. I think one of the things I've been quoted for recently uh, and I, I've just said this quote and it's kind of been picked up and moved. And I, and I love the quote is, I don't want to know who's won a fight before the fight happens. And, and I stand I stand by that. Uh, so, yeah, so pro fights. What uh, Obviously, with a lot of the pro fights, we've got quite a lot of um, local fighters and then I've had to bring international fighters in to fight them. So I don't know the international fighters as well, uh, but I'm looking forward to see how the UK guys do against the international competition. Uh, Tom Mullen's a big prospect in the UK. He's coming off a, a real tough defeat against Mark Ewan, who's another big prospect and he's, he's got a fight coming from that Wilson. loss that loss is not a bad loss that loss will no, exactly 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that Mark's going to go far. And if you watch the fight, the fight was 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 amazing, which is why it went fight of the night. And they both got a bonus for it. And so Tom's fighting. This is his first fight after that. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. Uh, we've got Marlon Jones versus Mitch Dobbins. Both of them had big amateur careers. Uh, Marlon Jones is a spy uh, from aspiring who he'll have. He's got a huge fan base. A very popular young man. He'll have a, he'll have he'll have the whole pretty much the whole arena is going to the whole venue is going to be behind him. Uh, Mitch Dobbins com comes from uh, SPG South Shields, trained under Alex Enland. You know, Alex Enland is a UK MMA legend. Uh, you know, he, he made it as far as the, as made it as far as the UFC, uh, but didn't get to compete because of health issues. But the fact that he even got picked up by them shows you the level he was at. You know, so uh, that that's a, a, a great pro fight. We've got the you know the main event is a bantamweight title. Uh, Rafael Uchegbu, who's training with the likes of Darren Till and Mike Grundy and Tom Aspinall. Aspinall and, I mean, Tom probably is the man at the moment at the minute after uh, that uh, arm, that straight arm of our lock. So, you know, that shows the kind of a he is. So seeing how well he does, he's got a tough fight. Um, amateurs, I mean, we've got uh, some really interesting uh, amateur lightweight title fights. We've got uh, Curtis Campbell, who have, has probably been the number one amateur, uh, is the number one informed amateur since the lockdown. He's come back, he's won multiple titles, titles on multiple shows at multiple weights, which is very unusual. Uh, but he doesn't have an almighty strap yet, so he's coming for that, and he's facing Kyle Jones. FCC, uh, Kyle... UKFC. Yeah, oh that's it. So he's looking for the set, and fair play to him, and he's good enough to do it, but Kyle Jones is going to be tough. Kyle Jones is a knockout artist, uh, you know, comes from a very well-rounded gym. Uh, if you look at the record of that gym on almighty, Hammer North Wales, they've, you know, when we first introduced a team with a night bonus, they come in as the away team, and they were the first team to win that. So they're a very, they're a very... Um, they're a, they're a very good team that's got a lot of they're sorry they're a very competitive team that's got a lot of a lot of positive history on Almighty. Uh, we've got Tier and Lockman taking on um, uh, Teddy Stringer. Teddy Stringer is obviously is a is a big prospect, well known in the UK. He's been over and re, 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 represented England and, and has done well over there. And obviously Tier and again training um, at a team Calbon, so you know the kind of caliber he's training with. So you know, so they're they're the that's the kind of top end of the card that's sticking out to me. And then down the three you. What, what I look at is you've just got, you look at the gyms we work with. So a lot of time when you're booking like the the uh, the amateurs that are coming up, you're obviously not going to know them as well. So you go by the gyms. So when you've got like a fight, like I've got Aspire versus MMA Academy. So which is obviously Aspire's Phil Turner, Dean Garnett, MMA Academy, you're looking at Jason Tan. You know that's going to be a good fight because you know the caliber of the, of the coach and, and the color of the gym. So I'm looking at gyms like that and I'm thinking that's a fight I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, there's there's two lads on from there. I think it's um, off the top of my head. It's uh, Charlie Bolton. Is he? No, it's not Charlie. Yeah, the, the, just the way the gyms all mixed, the, the way they mix together. It's Jackson Levy. Sorry, he's fighting. I think it's Charlie Barmer. But that that's going to be a, a, a one to look out for. Uh, but yeah, there's just all the way throughout. There's three ladies fights on as well. It's nice to get the ladies fights. We we're normally lucky if we get one on. So to have three on is quite good. Um, we've got um, so that that would be interesting to see how those days play out as well. We've got two that are starting out the night. Uh, and then we've got another one, a few few more fights that we can. But again, looking forward to seeing how they they do. I mean, on our last show, we had Michaela Clark on against uh, Caroline Plumley, and, and with the fight of the night bonuses, that was that was like one vote out from getting a fight of the night, and that was the opening fight of the card. So it kind of set the set the pace for the rest of the night, really. So looking forward to seeing how the ladies' fights play out as well. So many fights we <laughs> touched on, and I love it. That's why we get the promoter on, man. You know what's going on. You know what to tell the fans. The main event is Rafael Uchegbu, who we'll speak to a little bit later on in this show, versus Alexander Sasha Pyrev. And many people have very high expectations for Rafael. As you mentioned, coming out of Cowbon, fighting with Darren Till, Tom Aspinall, Grundy, and all of the other guys coming up in, in that gym. What do you most want to see in this main event from Rafael? And why this pairing in particular? Obviously, it had to have been built around Rafael, considering he's the local fighter. Yeah, I mean, Raf had been as, as won as won two fights on the bounce on Almighty. Uh, the first fight he had was was a last minute replacement, so it wasn't a great fight. Then he fought against a, a tough lad from Northern Ireland, and it was a real. I mean, Raf dominated the whole fight, uh, but the lad was tough, and he was he basically couldn't put him away. So this is going to be another step up for Raf. Um, you know, it was very hard to find someone in the UK who wanted to fight Raf in Liverpool. Because of what you've just said, he's he's the he's the hometown fighter. He's going to have the support behind him. He's got Team Cowbomb behind him. There just wasn't many people jumping out. So I always looked for UK first. There was nothing there. So we looked to see what was abroad. But obviously, with it being for a title, I wanted to make sure it was somebody that was going to have 
is going to is it had a good enough record. I don't want it to just them, them, they're, they're not coming over to just make the numbers up. They're coming over to get that. They want to get that about and take that back with them. You know, so that's why that pairing was was put together. Really, if if I could have found one UK, I would. But there, there was they weren't jumping out to want to fight fight with him. Uh, it's it, the thing is that with someone like Raf, because he's obviously got quite a big. Uh, he's, he's he's still obviously building his way up, but he's an undefeated fighter. It's a high risk fight for a lot of people. Uh, they don't want they don't want to to lose, or even if they're if they've got a, if they're a bit higher up the food chain than him him, they don't want that loss on their record because it's just it's a, just a strange one. There's a, a lot of lot lot there. Lot. Lot. That's it. So that that so that it's very it's very difficult. It's very difficult to find matches for Raf actually. But yeah, we've brought somebody in, and, and uh, you know, it was I think it was it was our co-main event originally, but it's obviously a, a solid main event, um, and I think it's going to be a, it's I think it's going to be a good fight. It's a five round fight as well, so that adds that in as well because obviously haven't, we haven't seen I haven't seen them go five rounds before, so let's see how they are uh, if it gets to that stage, what they're like in the fourth and the fifth round because cardio is going to going to play a massive part as well. Almighty FC 24 goes down in just a few days. If you like fighting, you're going to want to watch these fights. The pacing spectacular. 25 fights on the card. Pro title fight. Amateur title fights are plenty. This is where you go to see the future of UK MMA. Ray, let the fans know where to find whatever they need for Almighty. And let's get you on out of here, my friend. Yeah, so uh, obviously, uh, if you're coming to the event this weekend, it's at the Olympia, Olympia in Liverpool. you you want to get there early on because we've got we're known for having solid fights from the start. So get there early doors. Come, come and watch the whole show and, and enjoy it. Uh, you know, there's a pay per view link. You can you can catch that from any of the fighters. It'll be it'll be shared across their social media. I'll also uh, drop can, that in the description of this video itself. Fantastic. I've sent that to Lewis already. So he's got that. So that'll be in the video as well. Uh, you, you've got, we've got our Facebook page, Almighty Fighting Championship. We're on Instagram as well, uh, which is at Almighty Fighting. Uh, and again, we're on Twitter as well, which is the same handle. So, yeah, get behind us and, and follow the social media. Good work. And we've got our YouTube channel as well. Look, every 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 fight, all the shows we do, uh, they're obviously we do the live broadcast with the pay per view, and then two weeks later they're put on the YouTube channel. So all our back catalogue is on is on YouTube. So if you want to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, we've got quite a few subscribers on there, uh, and you can kind of see what what you can expect. Then you can look at the just look at the, some of the fights from the last show. You'll you'll know what what you've got to look forward to for this one. If you look at Almighty 23, you'll definitely buy 24. Ray, thanks again. Almighty is touted as one of the best shows on the UK scene, period. With that being considered, it's no surprise that plenty of Almighty 24's competitors have been here before. And two fighters returning for the pro scene specifically is where we start. Here are the veterans returning to the Almighty cage. The main event will be Liverpool native Rafael Uchegbu, who tries for gold against Alexander Sasha Pyrev. Rafael fights out of the well-respected Team Cowbon and is undefeated in his pro bouts, standing with a record of 5-0. I caught up with Rafael on Fight Week, and here's what he had to say. Joining us now is Rafael Uchegbu, who makes an attempt at 61 kg gold at Almighty this weekend. Rafael, how is fight camp going? Yeah, fight camp's been great. Um, it's been long, it's been hard, uh, but we're ready to go this Saturday. I'm excited for it, excited to you know, get my hand on my first title. You've got some high-level training partners. You fight out of a high-level gym. How does that help prepare you for big fights like this? Um, You know, you, you can't ask for the best than that, really, having some of the best fighters in the world in the gym. You know, seeing how they do things, emulating them. And then also, you know, training with them, getting their experience and their knowledge and things like that. It's, um, you know, it's next level and you can only get better and better and better when you get these people around you. With four finishes and a decision on your win, uh, your win record, how does it feel for you or how does it differ, I should say, when you get the finish or when you walk back with the decision? Yeah, getting the finish is so much more sweet. Um you know, after my last fight, when it did go to the decision, I was a little bit disappointed in myself. Um, you know, I, I did perform well still, but, you know, it's always nice to, to try and get, get the finish. You know, in this game, you want to be known as a finisher. Yeah. So it's still good to get the win, but finishing someone, you know, that, that can't be beaten. The finish feels like getting the job done. What would it mean to you to walk out with Almighty Gold this weekend? Yeah, it'd mean a lot, you know, of, put a lot of hard work in the last few years to you know keep climbing up the ranks and get myself into these positions so 
you know, to win this on Saturday will be massive for me and it's massive for my career going forward. You stand 5-0 and as a pro. You look to improve on that this weekend. You already had appearances in Bellator early on. Could we potentially be seeing you move from Almighty to a promotion like Cage Warriors or Bellator after this one? 6-0 and is a record that gets people calling. Yeah, definitely. You know, we just have to see who comes knocking, you know, what sort of the next steps are for myself. Um, you know, with the Bellator situation, you know, they weren't able to give me the activity that I needed. So I'm going to need to be with someone who's going to be able to keep me active and keep me fighting every couple of months, things like that. So we're just going to see what the options are after this. But I'm not in no rush to to do anything. I'm just going to keep taking it fight by fight. And then if something comes up, then perfect. But we'll see what happens. I'm not going to lie, man. With someone who fights like, like you do, with the potential that you have, I'd love to see you somewhere like Cage Warriors. Let's get you going up that UFC ladder, man. Something tells me we'll be seeing you there one day. <laughs> yeah, definitely one day. You know, as I say, I'm still, you know, young in this game, still not as experienced as a lot of fighters. You know, my amateur record was only small. Um, so, you know, as I said, I'm in no rush, but if they come knocking, if there's an opportunity for me to fight for them, 100%, I'll, you know, take that with both hands and start climbing up my way to the UFC. Something tells me Rafael has something special in store this weekend. We switch gears. Highly touted prospect Tom Mullen is going up against Aaron Bow, and Mullen looks to show his form after suffering the first setback of his career his last time out with Almighty at the hands of Mark Ewan. I spoke with a stoic and confident Tom Mullen on Fight Week. Joining us now is Tom Mullen, who wages war this weekend with Aaron Bow at Almighty 24. Tom, how are you feeling, mate? Good, I can't wait. It's been a while since my last one, but feeling more than ready than ever to like get go get going and get in that cage. Your last one was your first loss throughout your entire MMA career, amateur, professional, incredibly tough opponent in Mark Ewan. Did it suffering that loss reach you in a way that otherwise you may not have been reached or taught anything by your wins? Yeah, hundred percent. And if it, one regret would have been like I'd prefer taking it in amateur than pro, but. Uh, it's definitely made a, like a big difference to um, how I'm training now to how I'm before. Like how I'm working, now I've quit working. I'm just full time in the gym, training nonstop. Every how day. important is it for you to just get a win back, get back in the win column by any means necessary? That was your first loss, and I believe ten fights. Yeah, yeah. So massive. To be fair, it, it'll just feel right as well because I know I know what's going to happen. I've got like, that feeling that I'm just going to go in there and just give it everything I've got. Almighty always has the big fight feel. How do you enjoy fighting under the promotional banner and how are you looking forward to it? I can't wait. It's always good, Almighty. I've fought on it a few times, especially when I was amateur and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a quality show. Well run. Ray's, Ray's like, is out there now at the minute. He's going to be probably one of the best shows in the UK. Uh, the, how the way he looks after the fighters and stuff like that, it pays them, gives bonuses. No other like show does that. So it's one of the best shows out there at the minute. Are there any specific goals for 2022 for you? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I just get my record going up, get more wins, and then look to like, get them bigger, better shows probably. And then the aim, obviously, to get to UFC. Look forward to seeing you in there, man. That's all we got time for today. Look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Hopefully, victorious, man, will get you back in here. Yeah, nice one. Thank you, man. For many fighters, their first loss is the biggest learning experience of their career. We'll see if that's the case with Tom. Elsewhere on the pro card, we have Anthony O'Connor and David Connolly, both in action, albeit in separate fights. And Mitch Dobbins versus Marion Jones promises to deliver. Scott Johnson is going into his pro debut and makes the walk for the 12th time overall. He squares off with Dario Palazzo and looks to make a statement in his first pro bout. Here's what he had to say before the fight. Now joining us is the 6-5 and five amateur, Scott Johnson, who makes the 12th walk at Almighty 24. Scott, how is everything heading in? Good. Preparation's gone good. Um, probably being the best camp up to now. Uh, I've had the SNC program into it with um, Liverpool John Moores University under my coach, Connor. I've been able to say in the mornings this time, uh, whereas usually I don't. Because of work, but I've been able to say in the mornings, like work's let me get off early. So I've been saying the mornings and nights. So this is like the best camp and the best prepared I've, I've been. I'm coming into camp 
this fight week reasonably light, a bit lighter than normal. So I don't think I'll struggle to, with the cut or nothing like that. Because it'll be quite easy, to be honest, as well. So looking forward to it. I absolutely love to hear that, especially knowing that you're going on nine years of taking fights now. Hearing this yeah. camp is the best, that means the fuel is still there, the fire is still burning. What keeps you coming back for more each time? Yeah, yeah. This this, this being the best camp uh, by far, 100%. So, like, I made my amateur debut in 2000, and I don't even know what, what, what me and nine years ago. So, like, 13, I believe. I was, I was I was 16, yeah, I was 16 when I made my debut, 25, no, so I've been like, been fighting for like 10 years basically, so it's time to like, to show now, like what, what, what I'm worth and what I can do because like now I'm taking it fully serious now, now it's my pro debut, so I'm fighting, taking this fight serious and looking forward to it, like my last few amateur fights I've took serious, obviously I take every fight serious, I want to win, but I wouldn't say it's been a professional camp. I'd say it's still being like an amateur camp because obviously like we couldn't stop work and stuff like that. But this time it's been like a fully professional camp training like 16, 17 hours a week. So I'm looking forward to pushing a pace and getting out there. And I've always had good cardio in here, but I think this time I'll be able to push that extra pace and go for the five, three fives if, if need be. But I can't see him getting out the first, to be honest. You've experienced just about every outcome possible in there. And I'm sure it'd be nice to get it done in the first. But do you think yeah. all that all of that experience later in fights actually benefits you compared to most opposition? Yeah, definitely. Like, I've been, like, the full distance, the I think, three or four times now. I've, I've got a few submissions. I've got a um, – I think I've got a TKO. I think I might have a TKO. I don't know. I can't remember. I've, I've, I've had that many fights at amateur now, but I know I've got submissions. Uh, I've had um quite good on the back. My submission games better, and people really haven't seen my submission game that much. Even even though like I've just I got my purple belt last year, but I, I was a blue belt for five years. So like I'm probably more than a purple belt, maybe like a, a, a low level brown belt. And I'm sure other gyms would have given you the brown. There's some guys get their black belts in the cage after showing little to no jiu-jitsu yeah exactly and no one's seen me striking that's what I started off as a striker I, I started when I started training when I was 10 or 11 I started with, with uh, Muay Thai under Darren Till's former first ever Thai coach Simon Audley I, I trained with him um, doing me, me Muay Thai with him for like four or five years before I started even doing any MMA whatsoever so I was like 15 when I started training MMA 16 when I made my debut, so no one's really seen me striking. I thought I, I people always try and take me down in my last few fights. They tried to take me down, I've reversed it and thought this is easy on top, so I might as well just keep doing what I'm doing and just win the fight. So I'm not going out there to try and get cuts or bruises or bumps that I don't need to when I can just take them down and win easy. So no one's got to see me striking. I want to let me strike and go a bit in this fight as well. I'm looking forward to throwing some hands in the four ounce gloves. So You've been at this for quite some time. You're 11 fights in, and still there's so much to learn. If anybody watches this and doesn't get excited to go watch you in that cage this weekend, I don't know what to say. Scott, you've been awesome. Thanks again for being so easy to schedule. Let the fans know where to find you on social media. We'll get you out of here. Uh, Me Instagram, scottjohnson.96. I don't really use Facebook or Twitter, just Instagram mainly. So that's me Instagram, scottjohnson.96. Bo Gavin is also back in action at Almighty 24 in his first fight since over four years ago at Almighty 8. In a homecoming of sorts, Bo looks to even his pro record at one apiece, and we spoke to Bo on Fight Week. Now joining us is Bo Gavin, who is set to do battle at Almighty this weekend. Bo, how is everything feeling? Hey, mate, yeah, all good. Feeling ready. You haven't had a bout in so long. Is training camp any different than what you can remember? Uh, no, the same, really. Same intensity. If anything, I've pushed the intensity more with the new, with the new gym I'm at now. So it's going great. I'm excited. Any differences in the body? Anyone who's kept up with your Instagram knows you've always been in great shape. But is there any differences in the feeling in there? Obviously, you haven't been out of the gym the entire time. But yeah. it is a little bit different than being in active competition. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Even, like, the diet and stuff like that, you got to go through. Like, I eat well anyway, but 
the diet and like trying to lose the weight over a certain period of time is like it's a bit different and I'm my body's just getting back used to it again, you know what I mean? But it's it's got the muscle memory there. I'm still I'm still ready. It's still ready to go, you know what I mean? There are some fighters who believe in ring rust, there's others who don't. How do you shake the ring rust or how do you keep yourself from getting invested into these things? You know, I don't believe in it, to be honest, because I've done it before where I've been out for about a year and a half and I've came back into the ring and just, I'm just meant to be in there. and I feel at home when I'm in there. So even when I'm in the gym, I try and like get some sparring sessions where I've got no shinies on or got no top on and like get like that feel of the fights again. So there's no ring rust for me, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm always ready to go. Why is now the proper time to make this return to fighting? Uh, just the uh, I found my feet in a in a, a good gym that I'm at, and uh, I just at the fires come back to me honest to be honest. And uh, if all goes well, man, what does 2022 look like for you? We haven't seen you for so long, and we'd love to, man. You're great on a microphone. I'd love to just be able to speak to you a few times. Give me the excuse. Thank, thank you. Uh, um, well, it's gonna be an active year, definitely, hundred uh, percent. No matter what goes on, um, I'm back and I'm ready to ready to make a make it a, a statement. For everything and everyone we look forward to seeing it man only had a few minutes today hope to speak to you again victorious i'll see you no again worries, my mate. friend thanks very much for having me we focus our attention now to the amateur fights at hand but the amateur title fights specifically to begin with there are not one, not two, but three amateur title fights going down this weekend in Liverpool, and we're shining the spotlight on all of them. The 70 kilo division sees the spotlight as not only is the championship on the line, but the interim belt is as well. Tiernan and Lofren and Teddy Stringer go to battle for the 70 kilo amateur championship, and neither man is willing to back down. We spoke with both of the fighters, although Teddy's recording was corrupted. Teddy views this as his championship to lose, and he doesn't plan on losing it. Tiernan, on the other hand, well, I'll just let you see what he had to say. Joining us now is the undefeated 6-0 Irish prospect, Tiernan Lofren, who's back in action this weekend at Almighty FC 24, fighting for 70 kilo gold. Tiernan, how are you feeling ahead of this fight, man? I feel, feel unbelievable. I've never, never felt better going into a fight, honestly. Uh, just with all the lads, all the lads are obviously playing with two guys on UFC London. We have, I think it's me and three other guys on this exact yard. The gym's been absolutely flat out. I'm feel, feeling unbelievable, just peaking at the right time. You're fighting a battle-tested opponent in Teddy Stringer. What do you have to say about him in the lead-up to this? Yeah, he's a he's experienced, but it, I'm not I'm not too worried about it to be honest. Like he's experienced, he's experienced at losing in the last few fights. So like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he, he is he is battle tested, but at the end of the day, when it gets hard, I actually think that that's where the fight's gonna go in my favor. I, I think I'm gonna get in Teddy's face. He's gonna he's gonna feel he's gonna feel me in front of him, and he's just. I think I'll break him. I, I'm gonna. I'm, I plan to stop him. Not not that late either. I think I'll, I think I'll get him out of there pretty early. That's the plan. You, you've yet to lose in your career. Does that almost add fuel to the fire of like, hey, this streak can get more impressive. This is something that I can defend forever. There's no man that can say, hey, I got a win over you. That, that's it, lad. I on the field. It's only been. It's only been six. <laughs> it's only been six, really, but. No, I, I don't plan. I don't plan to be defeated as an amateur. Absolutely, I don't plan to be defeated ever now, mate. But like, I don't see any of these amateurs in the UK scene doing it. If I'm if I'm being honest, I plan to keep that going on Saturday night. I don't I don't see I don't see Teddy being the guy who can beat me as uh, out of all these amateurs. I'm being honest, but uh, yeah, I just can't wait for Saturday night. Hopefully, I'm hoping for a good test. And I, does, know, I will get that. I will get that. I tell you, he, he comes to face. So. Does the attention switch after this one? If, say you come out with the title, does it switch to unifying with the winner of the interim? Or does your mindset go possibly to going pro? What, what's what's your mindset at? My my plan as an amateur is to go 10-0. and 0. I, I want to go 10-0 as an amateur. I want to be the number one. I want to be the number one in every weight class fighting. So that'll be probably just rather with and light with. Um, I I'm not sure what's going on. I think I was asked 
I was asked to fight Curtis Campbell. And I said, yes. He's fighting for the interim belt now, so I don't know what happened there. I was talking to him last week. We were talking on the show. I goes, what happened with the fight? And he, he seems to think it just didn't happen, but I don't know if he turned it down or what happened. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that fight. If, if I, when I win the belt, if Curtis wins, that, that fight probably makes sense. If that happens to happen. I would love to have the two of you on and uh, get, get something going for that one. But yeah, if everything goes yeah. perfect in this one, how does it end? Uh, I, I think I don't, I don't think it'll be that late. I think we're going to get in Teddy's face early. I'm going to put us back in the stage. I'm going to be hitting big shots. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I'm going to hit him with whatever. It's, uh, I will get a stoppage in this fight, the 100%. This, this fight won't go the distance. I plan, I plan to stop Teddy pretty early. You hear it here first with Combat Sports UK. He's going to stop Teddy Stringer. We'll see what happens at Almighty 24. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I wish we had a bit more time. Let Curtis Campbell takes on Kyle Jones for the interim championship on the night, and this would give him championships in three different promotions. Curtis truly is one of the best prospects in the UK, and I was lucky enough to catch up with him before the fight. Now joining us, the multiple promotion champion, Curtis the Pink Panther Campbell, who is one of four men fighting for almighty 70 kilo gold this weekend. Curtis, how is everything this fight week? Everything's perfect, you know, and just cracking on with the water load, so everything's going to plan. Feeling great, to be fair. Um, now it's just time to take over some light pads, not too heavy, and just get ready for the, the Saturday. You've got all of the high-level experience an amateur could ask for. How prepared does that help you feel going into this fight and really every fight? Um, it's good because obviously I've got a good Thai background, which I've done Thai for quite a while now. So with all that, it was just a lot of experience coming through the strike. And it was only really the change with the groundwork and stuff like that that I had to change to. But now doing MMA for quite a while and getting a lot of good amateur fights behind me and fighting the level that I'm fighting. I just feel comfortable, confident and know whatever he brings, I'm more than happy happy where it ever goes in the fight. How does your opponent, Kyle, stack up to the opponents you've faced in the past? Um, he's good. He's good. Like obviously I don't I don't really research my opponents too much because I like to focus on the game plan that I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna set. So on Saturday, he will be fighting my fight, and that's how I control it, and that's what I look for when I go into every fight. So, um, he's a good fighter, though. I'm not laughing, I'm not underestimating, uh, underestimating him. He's a, he's a good lad, so it'll be a tough fight. UK FC gold, FCC gold, a number one ranking. How does Almighty Gold compare to these accolades that you already hold? Um good because it's another promotion it's another show so it'll just get my name up there even more and get me to that number one spot well i'm already number one realistically because the number one's nowhere to be seen so i'm second ranked number one won't be fighting me anytime soon i don't think he will fight me to be honest so it's hard not to stake your claim to number one considering all the belts you have you're not defeated and hey you're fighting whoever's put in front of you you're, you're getting the job done and if it all goes well how do you get the job done this weekend? Can't see it going past three rounds. Can't, Can't see it going past th three rounds. We're excited for it, man. 70 kilos is going to be a fun time this weekend. Let the fans know where to find you on Instagram. We'll let you get on to training. Yeah, thank you. Ah, okay, it's Campbell 12 as well. Thank you. The prospect of Lofren versus Campbell is incredible. I really do hope that fight eventually comes to fruition as it doesn't get any better than that, especially on the amateur circuit. Michael Evans and Damon Donald will do battle for the amateur 61 kilo belt this weekend as well in an intriguing clash. Damon Donald was kind enough to stop by. Joining yeah. us now is Damon Donald, who attempts for 61 kilo gold at Almighty this weekend. Damon, how are things on fight week, brother? Uh, I good, just, just water loading, so constantly at the toilet, but apart from that, it's all good. You're coming yeah. off of a couple of losses to high-end competition. How much do losses like that help you learn about yourself and prepare for your fight future? 
Uh, yeah, they've, like they've helped. They've helped a lot. I think. Yeah, I've learned. I've learned so much. Just take. Just taking two two losses and that, and just I don't want it to happen again at all. <laughs> I've been in the gym tra- training my ass off for this. When looking at your fight history, one has to notice the staggering amount of TKO finishes. One way or another, you go out on your shield or you take someone out. Why do you fight the way you do with so much fire behind you? It makes the fans really eager to see you fight. It's an entertainment business. I don't care win, lose, or draw. I just want to entertain people. I want people to be excited for when I fight and want to want to watch me fight. Don't care. Don't care about anything else. I'm not there at a point when I'm there to, I'm there to fight. You know what I mean? We see it. You can see it in the way that you fight. That you're you're just there for a good old fashioned fight, man. What do you see that your opponent finds success at? Or is good at, and do you think there's anything that he can really threaten you with in this one? Uh, I've not really watched anything, anything of him. Like, watched a fight or two, but end of the day, it's a fight, you know what I mean? Like Mike Tyson says, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face, and we'll just see what happens from there. Plans to make him hurt more than you? What's that? The plans just to make him hurt more than you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hit if you're able to walk but away. At the same time, I like getting hit. <laughs> oh, I feel it, man. I've met a lot of guys who say, hey, my biggest issue is I like blocking punches with my face. <laughs> yeah. If you're able to walk away this weekend with almighty gold, what would that mean for you as a fighter? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy and I would just be looking to get another fight again. I just, I just want to stay busy and const- constantly fight, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just love everything about fighting, so... I'd be looking to get another fight again straight after it. Fighting loves you as well. We didn't have much time for this one, but something tells me this isn't the only time we'll be speaking, my friend. I hope to catch you after the fight as well. The rest of the amateur slate is absolutely loaded as well. Although there are no other belts on the line, the action will be fierce. Charlie Balmer and Jack Dunleavy will do battle in an intense 68 kilo bout. A very happy Charlie Balmer spoke with us pre-fight. Now joining us is Charlie Balmer, who's back in the cage this weekend for Almighty FC. Charlie, how's the mindset ahead of this one? It's good, it's good. Being a good camp, being a very, very good camp. Yeah, just looking forward to getting back in there and just getting back in the win column. You've got five amateur scraps under your belt. What do you have to say about your early fight experiences and how has it helped you grow as a martial artist? You know, the first fight against Tanada, it was like a learning fight. It was just, like, showed me how much I needed to do on my grand game. And then just from there, I've got better from each time. And then, obviously, the last fight with Calm Connor, that was a really, really good fight for me. And then it's only going to improve me. A lot of fighters say that, and I tend to ask a lot of people this. Do you see more improvements coming from the losses than from the wins? Not because you try harder or whatever, but wherever you struggle in the fight, it kind of makes it very clear the next day in the gym what to do. Yeah, definitely, like you just said, it just makes you want to improve more on what you've done bad, what you, what you obviously lost, how you lost. So, like, if you got knocked out, how, how you can roll it, like, slip it, or if you got just basically Khabib, like I did against Kamara, but I'm not going to lie, I got badly battered in that. And then, um, yeah, just more grand game and just scrambling. You haven't fought for Almighty since your first amateur bout. Is there any excitement to be back in the building and to be fighting for Almighty, trying to right the ship? Yeah, obviously, Almighty is like one of the top shows in the UK. I think, anyway, that with hard to find it as well. Than Almighty. Yeah, definitely. That, I reckon it's one of the top three, top three amateur shows in the UK. So, yeah, looking forward to getting, getting back in that cage. What was the biggest hurdle for you going into this fight? Any difficulties in training or just in the mind at all? No, no, no injuries, no injuries, nothing. Just getting the mind, focus on getting the win, getting back in the win column. And last question, man. How many times could we potentially see you in there this year? Hopefully. I want to be active this year. I want to get three to four fights in this year, hopefully. Let's see it, man. It's been a blast to have you on. Hopefully we get to speak again in the future, man. At 61 kilos, we have Tommy Scogram and Brooklyn Thomas, who will scrap in Liverpool. And the 3-0 Thomas is focused on the task at hand. I caught up with Brooklyn ahead of Almighty 24. Now joining us is Brooklyn Thomas, who is set to fight at Almighty 24 this weekend. Brooklyn, how was everything during this fight week? Um, It's going good so far. Um, Just 
ticking over just getting the last bit of weight off um, yeah and then I'll be good to go is there anything in this fight camp that feels any different than you know you business as usual for you and just getting the job done in the gym um not really changed anything up no I start I focused a bit more on my striking like my hands are sharp like they're coming up they come on so much over this camp thanks to one of my boxing coaches down at Aspire uh, but other than that I've not really start not really focused on improving that like just my hands really I've got to focus on so yeah they're quite sharp you mentioned Aspire and they're such a high level fight camp and they're really got a lot of up and comers coming through the, their program how has Aspire been able to help you as a fighter? Um, <clears throat> Aspire Sort of like the bodies they have there, all of them are quite young, similar weight to me, and obviously they're quite high level as well. So, yeah, it benefited me loads going there. And obviously, I train at 12 gauge MMA as well in Manchester with Matt Thorpe. And like, I take the best out of both gyms, really. That is a they really good, good two gyms to cross yeah. train at. Yeah, yeah, it is good, it works out well. So do you see anything or think that there's anything that your opponent can throw at you that you might be a little bit tough to deal with in this one? Um, I've watched some videos on him and it just looks average, to be honest. Nothing that I don't think I'll be able to not deal with. He looks dangerous off his back, I think. Like he fights playing rubber guard and that sort of, so be careful of that. But other than that, nothing really. Absolutely love to hear the confidence. If all goes perfect, how do you envision getting the job done? Um, I don't really like to predict. I just sort of like to go with the flow. Um, what happens, happens. So, yeah. I guess the goal is just to walk out victorious. Brooklyn, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry it was so short, man. Let the fans know where to find you on social media. We'll get you on out of here. Uh, Brooklyn Thomas 16. Is my Instagram. Perfect. And then my Facebook is just my name, yeah. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us, man. You're great on the microphone. Hope to speak to you victorious. Nice one, mate. Lauren Ray is days away from her clash with Katrina King, yet she was in bright spirits as we caught up this week. Hard to root against Lauren after this one. Now joining us is the dazzling Lauren Ray, who is scheduled to compete this weekend at Almighty. Lauren, how are you feeling ahead of fight week? I'm feeling really good. I'm excited and um, I'm just excited to get in there now, to be honest. I'm what went into the decision <laughs> for you to begin fighting? It's not exactly the most common path in life. Yeah, well, I actually used to fight when I was younger in Muay Thai. So this was as a junior and I stopped when I went to university and had a big break. And when I decided to get back into it, I had a few setbacks with injury and um, then COVID happened and stuff and all these these little things actually just made me want to do it more. So I'd been training actually for a Thai fight last year um, and then ended up, I, could, I couldn't get on any shows and I was struggling to secure a match. And during that time, I'd started training BJJ at a, at a BJJ gym in Carlisle called Roger Rollers. And then doing bits with the MMA lad, lads down here in Liverpool and um, my head kind of got turned. So made the decision over Christmas. How have you been right enjoying fight camp? How is it differ as well? Because it's got to be a little bit different than the Thai fights. Yeah, it is different and it can be brutal at times because you're doing a lot of like high impact stuff and your body has to get conditioned to the floor stuff, the ground stuff. But I've loved it, to be honest. I've loved the learning and I've, I feel like I've progressed well every week and I've got a, a really solid team around me. So, yeah, I've enjoyed it. How are the nerves? Um, I I'm all right at the minute. I'm excited more than anything. I'm, I'm sure by the weekend I will be feeling the nerves more for the occasion, but um, no, I'm, I'm feeling good. Almighty consistently puts out fights that have the big fight feel. How excited are you to walk out there under the banner this weekend? Yeah, I'm really excited and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity as well. I actually saw my friends fight on Almighty last November and I thought to myself at the time, like oh, I could see myself in there and it's totally materialized. So I'm excited. If all goes perfectly, how do you get it done in there? Oh, you'll have to wait and find out. Well, <laughs> it gives us a reason to tune in. On the ground. <laughs>
<laughs> we look forward to it. Lauren, I'm sorry we didn't have more time. Thank you so much. For anyone who doesn't Thank know, you. Lauren rescheduled us about an hour and a half back because I wasn't bright enough to understand the UK <laughs> back in time. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll speak again. Thank you. Catch you soon. James Slavin is back in the cage when he takes on Harda Karim, and both of these men are hungry for a win. Something's got to give when the two face off, but for now, it seems at least Karim is feeling pretty jolly. Here's what we had to say ahead of this fight. Joining us now is amateur prospect Harda Karim, who looks to push his win streak to three at Almighty FC this weekend. How are you feeling on fight week? And I feel uh, great. There's been a, a hard couple of weeks training and uh, I've put in all the work that's necessary. So I'm feeling very good. Now it's just uh, enjoying all the hard work I've put in. Before we get into the fight, I had to ask, what led to you starting the fight? Why is it that fighting is what you want to do? It's actually a, a funny story. I started training three years ago. Um, I had no background in martial arts. I, I was playing basketball back then. And I watched uh, Khabib versus Connor. And it was a big event. And I thought it looked uh, a lot of fun. And I went to a gym the, a few days later. And I had my first fight six months after. Man, that's a heck of a story. A lot of people came over because of Khabib versus Connor. And for me, it just it feels very recent. For you, that was yeah. the beginning of this journey. I wanted to yeah. ask, you alternated wins and losses until this win streak. What would it mean for you to push the streak to three and really put those losses behind you? It's, um, it's, it's I feel like I've had development every fight. You know, I was very new to the game. And, you know, the first fight, I wasn't really ready to be in the cage. I hadn't trained long enough. And, you know, before having these two last fights, I, I was uh, training somewhere where I had my own development in my own hands i had to learn everything through youtube and and just training with friends and watching khabib fights but um <laughs> after you know i was yeah i moved to stockholm for a bit i trained at all star and then uh all frontline academy here in norway i got in contact with a coach and i was able to train with the pro team there and i feel like now i finally have a team a coach and and i'm developing so i think you know, we will do two more amateur fights or semi-pro fights and, and then it's time to go to pro because uh, I've been an athlete all my life and uh, it's, it's, it's time to uh, improve every day. Yes, yes, yes. Have you learned more about yourself from your wins or from your losses? Or hey, maybe just from Khabib on YouTube. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think both. I think uh, uh, my losses really hurt because uh, when I was playing basketball, you know, it doesn't mean as much to lose a game or, or to uh, win a game, that, a fight. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in the losses I've had has been against very experienced opponents. The one guy I fought in IMAF, he was he had like 35 fights. That was my third fight meeting him, I think. Uh, one another guy I lose to, he had like 15 fights when I had my second fight. So I'm very grateful for the losses as well because they, they taught me to improve. They kind of put my improvement on turbo. So it had and to be coming quicker. from a sport like basketball. It's nice. to well, I, Nice is not the word I should use, but it's got to be very useful to suffer a loss here. Because like you said, I played basketball coming up my whole life here in the States. It's not the same losing a basketball game and losing a fight. It doesn't mean anything like like I remember I was playing even in college in, in the States and whenever we lost a game, I, it didn't mean much to me, you know, and, and in basketball, I was never, you know, I, I really when I was a kid, I wanted to start boxing, but my father wouldn't let me because I was getting in a lot of fights and everything. So it had to be he was like pick another sport. And I just I just thought it was fun to play with my friends. And somehow I got good enough to. You know, I played professional here in Norway. I played in the States and everything, but it, it never really fighting is just so more, much more natural to me. And I feel like I can be myself fully and I'm developing as a person fight to fight even. And so I'll I'm say really one happy. thing. I'll say one thing. You're fantastic on the microphone. We've got to get you on again in the future. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for having me. 
Stian Gonzalez Arvik will walk down the aisle anticipating a war with Harvey Roberts. Stian takes on the three and two vet, and this bout could be a big breakthrough for him. Joining us now is almighty prospect Stian Gonzalez Arvik, who gets back in there this weekend for the promotion. How is everything feeling just under a week away? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. This camp, uh, I feel like we've been training really hard for this fight. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah. The nerves have to be picking up as the fight nears by. How do you deal with everything that goes into the fight? A lot of people have a lot going on in their mind. Training switches a little bit. How do you deal with everything before a fight? Like, mostly when... I know, like, everybody has nerves, as uh, as you're saying. Uh, but you just have to, like, you know, keep focus on what you can control. You don't, like, worry that much about what you can control. And, yeah, just <laughs> putting myself out there. Because, yeah, this is my second match. So, yeah, I kind of feel like, yeah, a, a little bit. But it'll be a, it would be good. I'll just have to keep on fighting and the nerves will go away automatically. Yeah. How is the feeling in the gym? Is it a little bit more intense ahead of fight time or is it just more business as usual? No, no. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a little bit more intense, of course, because, yeah, like with uh, with everything, with uh, like the diet and stuff. Uh, sometimes I don't even eat breakfast and I go to the to the sparring days and I'm hungry, like I'm physically hungry, you know, but also mentally, you know. So, well, yeah, this no, early think... into your career, it's got to be rough to adjust to the meals, the dieting, and even the cutting weight has to be brutal. How is all of it? Uh, it is what it is, you know. You just have to do it. Uh, a bit unusual, yeah, to be like that strict with all your diet and stuff. But I think it's also fun to like learn about your weight and your body and how you can like adjust it uh, according to what you need you know so no i think it's fun but it's painful you know <laughs> i love the mindset and i love how you approach things man just one more thing from us what is the goal for you in 2022 how many fights because this is only your second bout in total it's time to find out yeah because i'm 22 so i just want to compete as much as possible because you know with the corona and uh, everything I wanted to compete more, but I haven't had the possibility until now. So we're just going to go full forward and just compete as often as we can. It's your time yeah. to shine now, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us for this brief interview. I wish you the best of luck. And Deck Dean will do battle with Lorenzo Parente at 70 kilos, and Deck is feeling confident going in. With the fight being this nearby, here's a little dive into the psyche of Deck Dean. Joining us now is Deck Dean, who is back in action this weekend at Almighty FC 24. How's the mind and, mind and body ahead of this fight week? All right, mate. It's just the uh, same old, isn't it, really? It's just another fight, to be honest. How is preparation ahead of a show as a well-respected as Almighty? You've got to be excited to put on a good performance in front of the bright lights, because as far as an amateur show goes, Almighty's about as good as it gets. Yes, no, I've not, not fought in it before, to be fair, so quite looking forward to fighting on it. It's, it's a change of scenery. This fight camp with 12 gauge, where have you seen the most improvements? Um, don't know, to be honest. The, the, the biggest change is I've actually started lifting weights now. I've never, <laughs> never lifted weights before. He's starting to put some some strength on Considering you just started, were you impressed by how much you could put up or were you a little bit disappointed by, by what happened? I remember back in the day before I had ever started lifting, I used to think I could put up so much. And then my first day of lifting, I became a very sad young boy. Um, to say, both, uh, really. uh, you mind just giving a give that answer now? I'll just cut out the drop. Yeah, a uh, bit of both, really, to be honest. I've got a quite a manual job, you see, so I'm picking every shit up all the time. But when it's actually on a weight bar, it was different. Do you know what I mean? Just weren't used to it. I'm you got the natural it. strength. It's not the weight room strength. Yeah, yeah, I've got the farmer strength. <laughs> Who are some of the bodies that have helped you the most that coming into this one? Uh, I'd say Young Pedders and uh, Josh. 
Josh Dean, who was here earlier on the show. But if all yeah. goes according to plan this weekend, how do you walk out victorious? Where do you see yourself as uh, better than your opponent? Not just so much as better, but where do you really see yourself excelling in comparison? Uh, from what I've seen of him everywhere, really, to be honest. It just looks like a bit of an aggressive striker. Don't look too bad off his back. But I'm not really seeing too much footage. I'm not really asked what he's going to do. Do you know what I mean? I'll have to focus on what I'm going to do. And what are you going to do going in there? Smash him. Smash him. I love to hear it. Thank you so much for joining us, man. This was a short one, but something tells me we'll be speaking quite a bit in the future. Let the fans know where to find you on social media. We'll get you on out. Uh, on Instagram, it's just at that D. Josh Dean is another Dean who fights this weekend, and he will do so just weeks removed from his last clash at UKFC 18. Josh fights Cameron Cottery, and I've caught up with Josh Dean for the first time since UKFC 18. Now joining us is Josh Dean, who just so happens to be the first fighter I've spoken to for multiple different shows here on Combat Sports UK. Josh goes into Almighty this weekend, believing the third time is the charm. How is everything, my friend? Uh, really good, really good. Um, I had, had my birthday yesterday, so that was a really nice day. Um, but yeah, feeling good. Um, I'm really liking this quick turnaround, you know, sort of staying in shape, staying sharp. I think it, it's good. Um, you know, I've been in since the start of the year, so yeah, really good and ready to go. What better way to spend your birthday than in that cage trying to get your win, huh? How do you keep such a great mindset and outlook in this sport and just show up in the gym day in, day out when this sport is one of the most grueling that you can be a part of? And most people don't show up for those second, third, fourth sessions. Meanwhile, you're taking fights and you're here fighting a few weeks later. What goes into that mindset? Yeah, my coach said something really interesting just last week, actually, that it's a lifestyle sport, so... Yeah, you, you've sort of got to embrace the soak and turn up and really put yourself into it. And the, the thing is, I really enjoy it. I love it. I love the dieting. I love the training hard. I even love the days where you don't, you might not train well or you the nail instead of the hammer. I love it all. Um, and I wouldn't be doing it and putting as much into it as I was and putting myself out there if I didn't. So, yeah, I love this shit. Like, there's no other reason that why. You know what I mean? It, I wouldn't be doing it as an amateur at the level that I am in terms of commitment and diet and, and everything I'm putting myself through if I didn't. Yeah, it's just, this is my life now. This is my it's life. More, it's more than just the profession, more than just the sport. It's a passion, man. You've had, you've had two amateur bouts filled with learning experiences. Your most recent fight with Frank Kenny at UKFC 18 was very recent as well. Razor thin fight, by the way. How do you take learning experiences from these fights and come through with a win this weekend? Give yourself that birthday gift. Um, yeah, just, you've just got to analyse what you did. I think what you did well. Um, I think after the first one, I was a little bit focused on what I could do better and didn't give myself enough. But as you say, this one was quite thin and I'm re I was really happy with my performance. I was really happy with the jumps I made. And if... I can use fights as a measuring stick for my progress along my, my journey, let's say, then, yeah, really happy with it. Um, and things will but things will come together and I'll start putting it together and I will get those wins. And that will be next Saturday. I will get my hand raised. Um, I'm getting better every day. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely coming. I'm starting to put it together now. And I'm about to be the best version of myself. And that, that starts April 2nd in that almighty cage at Olympia in Liverpool. Something tells me the best version of yourself is years to come, but the best possible right now might just be here. Has there been any difference in the gym at all between fights? Usually when I ask the fighters, they're not going from camp to camp, but you just got out of a fight. So is it just kind of a continuation of camp? How do you go about eating and, and getting your weight back up knowing you're fighting so soon after? Yeah, so um, I had like, I had one day off, um, went out for a curry with my mates after the fight. Didn't drink and had had one day off of maybe just having a little bit more, but yeah, I've, I've just been straight back on it. Um, I've, I don't limit myself. I don't really eat rabbit food. I just try and eat well, try and eat healthy, and then just taper down smart. I think if you try and starve yourself, then you, you end up ballooning and you end up uh, unwell. And yeah, I just I've just tried to sort of stay at what I want to walk around, and then just make the cut as easy as I can for myself. My weight's really good at the moment. Um, started my water load yesterday. And yeah, if I can cut the same amount and feel like I did in the cage 
uh, two, three weeks ago, then that's going to be perfect. And right now we're, we're on track for that. So that's all good. What are you looking forward to showing most in there this weekend? Again, improvements. Um, nothing in particular, just improvements. I, I just want to look at every fight and I want people to look at every fight and think, yep, he's getting better. He's getting better. He's getting better. Uh, I think I will be. Um, again, it might be a short turnaround, but the adjustments that I can make in that short amount of time and the adjustments that I can make from that fight, I will be a, a better version of myself and that will show in the cage. Top-tier approach, top-tier mindset, and a top-tier gym. Thank you so much for joining us, Josh. This time, let's get you on the post show too, my friend. Hope to speak yep. to you soon. Good luck in there. Thank you. Other fights on the card include Liam Shaw versus Sam Hill, Kay Aarons versus Caroline Plumley, Cuba Peltier versus John Johnson, Lucy Maroy versus Ellie Davis, Matthias Bisha versus Josh Carrick, Joel Bassnet versus Kieran Roach, Juan Inseto versus Sayamun Rida, Jasim Beg versus Charlie Bolton. Well, folks, that's just about it. Thank you to Ray Thompson and all of the fighters involved in making this possible. We are beyond happy to be bringing the new revolution of MMA in the UK to life. We hope to speak to as many fighters as we can post-fight as well. To the fighters, feel free to get in contact with us on any of the Combat Sports UK social media pages, and we will be bringing you guys all an Almighty 24 recap to go with this preview. For live coverage of Almighty 24 and the absolute best outlet for all things fighting in the UK, make sure you check us out at combatsports.co.uk and head to the Almighty website to get the pay-per-view. You're not going to want to miss these fights. On behalf of Combat Sports UK, I'm Jendo, signing off. Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the body here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK.